Does drinking ozonated water damage the gut biome? That's what I will try to answer in today's video. I'm Paula, the crazy ozone lady, and I've been crazy enough in my life to drink literally oceans of ozonated water. And just like you, before you clicked on this video, I have asked myself at one point what this may have done to my gut biome. After all, we know that ozone is able to kill essentially every known bacteria and virus. It's even able to kill the bacteria which produces anthrax, and that's one hell of a bacteria. So then why would it magically spare the good bacteria in our digestion? Doesn't make much sense. But I will get to the bottom of this question in this video. But first, as usual, some shameless self-promotion. One of the most unfortunate things that I have to witness in the ozone therapy world is how ozone is applied these days. And it's often applied in a way where it's doomed to fail from the start. And that's because there's a lot of misinformation about ozone therapy. And that misinformation stems on one part from companies which sell ozone equipment to home ozone users and it's in their interest to make people believe that what they can do at home that it will have the same effect or a very similar effect to what you can get at your doctors your doctor on the other hand in his interest it lies to make you believe that the only viable and the only really effective treatment is the one that you can get at his office and both things can be wrong. They can be very effective, but oftentimes they're not. And my interest, on the other hand, is to see people get results. And this means sometimes not doing ozone therapy at all. So sometimes I actually discourage people from booking that ozone treatment at the doctors or from buying that ozone generator for their home and instead i suggest other things so if you're thinking about doing ozone therapy if you want to number one if you want to find out if ozone therapy is something that you should do and number two if you do it how to do it in a way that is really effective then you may want to book a consultation with me first and if you're interested in this then go in the description below the video where you will find more information back to the topic of this video is it possible that by drinking ozonated water that we damage our gut biome well the problem is there are no studies on this which is not unusual because there are really very very few good quality studies in ozone therapy there is one study which claims that drinking ozonated water and doing rectal insufflation actually improved dysbiosis. So dysbiosis means disturbed gut biome. But when one studies, when one reads the text of that study, it becomes clear that the study could not have possibly come to the conclusion because they actually never tested the stool of the study participants. So they actually never looked at the gut biome. So it's really a mystery how they could have come to the conclusion that this improved dysbiosis. So this is just one example of the poor quality studies that are present in ozone therapy, but also in other areas of medicine. But in my opinion, we don't really need studies to answer the question because all we need to do is really just look at human physiology. And when we do this, it becomes clear that it is highly unlikely or nearly impossible that drinking ozonated water would do any damage to our good bacteria. And here are the two reasons for this. Reason number one, the small intestine is as good as devoid of any bacteria. So in a healthy human being, the small intestine is supposed to be very, very poor in bacteria. But that's exactly where ozonated water goes after we drink it. It goes into the small intestine. Now, in those cases when there is bacteria present in the small intestine, this is a medical condition and it's called SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And it's conventionally treated with something that kills bacteria, namely antibiotics. Ozone, of course, is another type of natural antibiotic. It also kills bacteria. So although no studies exist on the topic, it is possible that drinking ozonated water could actually help with SIBO. So even if you end up killing some bacteria in your small intestine, 
the better because they're not supposed to be there to begin with. So you may be asking, well, how come that the small intestine is so poor in bacteria and where are all the good bacteria if not there? Well, they're all in the large intestine. The large intestine, this is where digestion through fermentation takes place. For this, bacteria are needed. The digestion in our small intestine happens with the help of enzymes, not bacteria. And it appears that our digestive system has been designed in a way to make sure that the small intestine is as poor in bacteria as possible. And yes, I said designed, not evolved because there is more and more scientific evidence that keeps emerging which shows that there must have been a designer or a type of a higher intelligence which designed life, including humans. I know, this may sound crazy, but what can I say? You've been warned. Now, if you're still skeptical about whether the small intestine is supposed to be poor in bacteria, consider the following. There are two mechanisms which ensure that there are no or very, very few bacteria in the small intestine. The first one is the extreme acidity of our stomachs, which ranges between 1.5 and 3.5. This is only comparable to the stomachs of other carnivores like cats and dogs. So this not only helps us digest meat, but it also serves as a protective barrier against pathogens because there are only very few bacteria which can survive such a highly acidic environment. And if they do, then they usually create a medical problem. The other mechanism which ensures that there are as good as no bacteria in the small intestine is the ileocecal valve. And you can find this valve between the large and the small intestine. And the function of the ileocecal valve is to make sure that the content of the large intestine, which contains a lot of bacteria, does not move back into the small intestine. In the cases where it does, and in cases where the ileocecal valve malfunctions, then this puts patients at a higher risk of SIBO. So both the high acidity of the stomach and the ileocecal valve protect the small intestine from being overpopulated by bacteria, but that's exactly where the ozonated water goes, into the small intestine, not into the large intestine, where all the good bacteria are. Now you may be wondering, well, but if I drink really a lot of ozonated water, it may at the end reach the large intestine and do some damage there or not. Well, it is possible, but in my opinion, it's highly improbable. Which brings us to reason number two, why drinking ozonated water most likely has no negative impact on the gut biome. That's because the water won't reach the large intestine, and if it does, it most probably won't contain any ozone anymore. Consider the fact that the small intestine is between 22 and 25 feet long. So although it is called the small intestine, it's actually the longer part of our digestive tract, with a large intestine being only six to seven feet long. And the small intestine is filled with gastric juices, secretions, and chyme, which is the mix of food and all those different fluids. So for the ozonated water to reach the large intestine and kill some good bacteria there, it would need to travel the entire length of the small intestine, so all those more than 20 feet, and then still retain its ozone charge. And this is, in my opinion, really difficult to imagine because ozone, as we know, is highly reactive. So the minute we ingest the ozonated water, it starts reacting with the saliva, with the contents of our stomach and the contents of our small intestine. So hypothetically speaking, if in fact some of the ozonated water should reach the large intestine, it is nearly impossible that it would still hold any ozone charge, in my opinion. So summarized, when we drink ozonated water, it lands in the small intestine and the small intestine is supposed to be very poor in bacteria in a healthy human being. If there is bacteria present there, it's a disease called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. The good bacteria all reside in the large intestine and the ozonated water that we drink does not reach that far. If it did, it mostly would not contain any ozone anymore. Hence the verdict of the crazy ozone lady, although no study ever formally examines the impact of drinking ozonated water on the gut biome, 
I am not concerned. I am not worried about killing any good bacteria by drinking ozonated water. In that vein, cheers, drink up, and don't be concerned about what you're doing to your gut biome by drinking ozonated water. If you've been paying attention to the ozone news, then you may have learned that the Ministry of Truth and Justice, also known as Google and YouTube, that they've been removing information about ozone therapy all to protect you all for your own good. So if you want to join the rebellion against the dictators of big tech, and if you want to be kept up to date on all the thought crimes that I've been engaging in, please subscribe to my newsletter and you will find a link to it underneath the video. Thank you very much for watching. Go eat a steak and see you in the next video. Please be advised that you should not listen to people calling themselves crazy ozone ladies to seek medical advice. If you're sick, go see a doctor. And always listen to the CDC and the WHO. They're the only legitimate holders of medical truths. They have pre-thought everything for us, so we peasants, we non-essentials don't have to. Please do not put people in danger by thinking for yourself. Thank you very much.